not the best theme. Honestly, this is, in my opinion, the best interpretation of the saxophone. Hello, my beautiful life brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Y'all, before we get into this video, I just want to say a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed. I hit a thousand subscribers and I'm one step closer to getting monetized. Now we just got to hit those 4,000 watch hours, which I am maybe getting close. So after you watch this video as a whole, go ahead and go and watch another video and it's called binge viewing and I appreciate it. Well, enough about that. Let's get into this. Today we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Dragis Belgique season two, episode six, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And wait till the end because I will let you know who had my fabs and drabs of the week. My best and worst looks. Before we get into it, I just want to say I want to apologize. Some of my Drag Race Belgique videos have been late. And that is mainly because I am producing three videos a week. And it's just a lot of work, honestly. Uh, this is not my full-time job. I'm not getting paid for it. So it is a very much uh, my little extracurricular activity for you. So I appreciate all those people that are sticking through it. I will finish the season despite the low view count because we're too far into it now. Enough about that, now let's get into these looks. This week's runway theme is Saxy Outfits, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of Adolf Sax. Adolf Sax, for those of you who do not know, is a Belgian inventor who invented the infamous saxophone. So, buckle up and let's get into it. First up, it's Lulu Velvet, and Lulu Velvet is coming in in a blue velvet dress with this giant leopard print saxophone. She said that she is inspired by one of her favorite movies, Blue Velvet. Now, personally, I don't know this movie, so I don't know the reference. I can only judge it for what she is showing us on the runway. The first thing I will say that this is very 80s and it's got a little bit of that weird touch to it, which I think is super fun, but she's not doing the 80s in the way that we used to see 80s, where people like to do bad 80s. She's currently of going with like good 80s. I also like that she went with a velvet. Her name is Lulu Velvet. So I do like when people have a little bit of a signature and for Lulu, it is definitely this type of fabric. Now, when it comes to the saxophone, this is not the most obvious saxophone, which honestly I kind of appreciate because to get five looks that were inspired by a saxophone is a little bit hard to be honest. And so I like that she took it into this a little bit more surrealistic vibe by putting a leopard print saxophone. I mean, I don't know what a leopard her saxophone has to do with anything but girl do you and as she's walking down the runway she's definitely feeling a little bit more elegant a little bit more put together all in all it's a pretty good look it's not my favorite it's not my worst it is an outfit that is adequate for the drag race stage i don't have a lot to say on this outfit honestly i it just is not inspiring to me and i don't know how to make it better i just wouldn't have went in this direction altogether but it looks cute on her if it's her style and that is why i'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft bow. next up it's gabbana and gabbana is coming out in this nude illusion dress with this giant saxophone wrapped all around her she's got the music notes as well and she's got a giant treble clef in her hair first off let's talk about this hair oh my god i love this hair, this treble clef in there. It's like this elegant touch on this classic hairdo and it's got all of the little rhinestones in it that really brings it up to the next level. This is superb and I love it. Now, as we go down the garment, we realize that I don't think that the dress itself is as successful as the hair. First up, she's decided to go with this nude illusion, but the nude illusion is quite loose on her, so we're really missing the illusion part of nude illusion. On top of it, she decided to go with a dress, and I never understand a nude illusion dress. Personally, if you are gonna do nude illusion, it should be a bodysuit so that it feels like you are naked. This is just a beige fabric. 
So that's also really not helping. I wish if she had done this, it would have been as like a bodysuit or just done a colored fabric. Like why does it have to be a nude illusion? You know what I mean? The giant saxophone and the giant music notes are super cool. I almost wish that the music notes were a little bit bigger and placed a little bit more strategically to more give you that like va 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 boom esque. Additionally, I wish there was more music notes. It feels very bare. It feels like there are these two big pieces and nothing on the nude part. Again, maybe add a couple of additional music notes or maybe add some rhinestones. Just give me something more. All in all, this is an okay dress. It's not my favorite. And considering the stuff that Gabbana has been giving us all season, this is not at the same level. So for Gabbana, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Alvida, and Alvida is going a little bit different, giving you this black catsuit with these metal pieces all over it. She said that she is a deconstructed saxophone. Now, first things I will say, I am glad that somebody decided to go in a slightly different direction. This deconstructed saxophone definitely brings it into a different dimension and definitely makes it a little bit edgier and a little bit cooler. That being said, let's actually analyze this outfit. The outfit is literally a black bodysuit and it's got different pieces all over it. I just feel like it could have used some refinement. For example, this headpiece that comes down and makes the giant saxophone, super cool, love it. But I wish it went a little bit higher before it goes down because it feels like it is pulling her back. Imagine this being a little bit of a crown and then like pulling back. I think that would have just added that little extra edge. Then let's look at the body's front piece here. And it definitely feels like a bunch of cardboard cutouts that she's just like holding on her. I wish they were a little bit more integrated and a little bit more shaped to her body. I think she could have done this exact thing, but then added a little bit of like steampunk into it. I think it would have really taken it to the next level right now all the colors are feeling flat imagine having some different tonalities in there a little bit of distressed look i think would have went a long way and some additional pieces here and there then the bodysuit itself is just plain black uh again a couple of rhinestones would have really helped make this feel a little bit more special. All in all, this is not Alvida's best look, but I do appreciate the swing she made and I do appreciate the more uniqueness of the look comparative to all the other ones. And it is kind of cool. So for this specific runway, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft bow. <laughs> It's La Verve, and La Verve is coming out in this giant oversized petticoat in this purple aubergine color. She's paired it with like a silver bralette, some silver in her beard, and some silver horns all around her. Now I will say I like the idea of a petticoat because when I heard the theme, I also additionally thought petticoat because that is from like the 1800s where Adolf Sox was born. So, you know, putting a little bit of that history into it because besides the saxophone, that's all you really have to work with. And she's mixed the two, which I really appreciate. I also appreciate that she's actually painted her beard. This is the second week in a row and I like a painted beard. Clear. Continue your way up, we get to the hair. She decided to go with a turban. And I feel like this was a real big miss. I feel like a, a really big spectacular silver hair would have really taken this to the next level. I feel like it, this turban is where she's the most comfortable, but I don't necessarily know that it works with this look because this are two different styles that to me are a little bit clashing. Then let's talk about the horn. She said she's got all of these horns all around her and at the front, she's got the saxophone. Honestly, I think this is a good play. Most people were gonna be talking about the saxophone, but Adolf Sax did work on other wind instruments. So having multiple different horn instruments is a cool play. Honestly, I just wish there was more of them. There's a few hanging out, but like, I'm like, give me a collar, give me, give me like three times as many, really make it a moment you're a drag queen, go a little bit over the top with it. So obviously it didn't 100% hit the mark and I think there's definitely room for improvement, but I like this idea and I like this thinking and because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft bow. Next up, it's Chloe Clark and Chloe Clark is coming in in this half yellow, half nude illusion bodysuit giving you saxophone and the music note. Honestly, this is 
in my opinion, the best interpretation of the saxophone. The idea that she got half a saxophone on her left and it goes all the way to her foot makes a lot of sense. On top of it, she also decided to do Nude Illusion, but hers fits like a glove, so it definitely feels Nude Illusion-esque. On top of it, she went with a bodysuit, which helps make that come true. She's put a bunch of music notes and a bunch of crystals on it, so even that we know it's not a Nude Illusion, it definitely gives you an extra vibe. This is super camp, but she's found a way to make it fashion. She's also channeled the same most Chino runway that a few of the queens have done. And honestly, if I was on the show, would have probably done the same. There's only so many references in this music realm that I can think of. And so obviously a lot of people were gonna go here, but Chloe Clark made the best version of it. She's paired it with black hair. The black hair is fine, it's great hair, but after seeing Gabbana's hair, I wish she had like a treble clef or something in there just to take it up that extra notch. All in all, this is a pretty good look and like I said, the best one of the week. And so therefore, for Chloe Clark, it is definitely gonna be a five. Y'all, and that is it for this week's runway. There's only five queens left, so we're, these episodes are getting shorter. Now, before we get into the fabs and drabs of the week, let's talk about this runway. This was not the best theme. This was a really hard theme for the queens. I say this not because it was particularly bad. The idea of connecting it to a Belgian icon, an inventor, is a super cool thought process, but they chose somebody who's only got one invention, which was a saxophone. So you ended up getting five saxophones on the runway. What I like about a theme is having something that people can riff on, can put their personality on, can really go in different directions. And this one didn't allow that. And that was sort of like the bummer there. So I don't blame the Queens at all for this kind of mediocre runway overall. I feel like it really just needed a different theme. This could have been an inventor's theme and then each one could have done a different inventor and one of them would have been a saxophone you know what I mean like that's where it should have gone as opposed to being so specific but enough about that let's get into the reason why you guys are here you guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week well my drab of the week this week has to go to Gabbana oh. uh, I think that the garment does look pretty well made and it's got a good concept overall but it just was missing that extra and that nude illusion was really bothering the shit out of me um, and then once you see it next to Chloe Clark's, it really feels like the basic version of her. So sorry, Miss Gabbana, you did really well in general, but not this week. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week is Chloe Clark. No surprise here. Uh, Chloe Clark has always been the fashion queen of the season. And this week she was the one who turned it up the best on this runway. Given that this was basically all carbon copies of each other, you can really see the difference in elevation and Chloe is really at a next level. But in this episode, we did lose a Chloe Clark, which is really unfortunate because she has been turning it up in the runways, but actually not that surprising because she was struggling with that French. I would love to see her on an all-star season when she can do it in English. Clearly she got the fashion and taste to compete at that level. So that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social channels, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye. -bye.